In this video produced by Danfoss, we will discuss the different phases of CO2 and how two of its phase changes occur by altering either the pressure or the temperature. Carbon dioxide, R744, and CO2 are all names for the same substance. In this video, we will refer to it only as CO2. Compared to commonly used refrigerants, R134A and R717, CO2 has some unique characteristics. It operates at a much higher pressure, but across a narrower temperature range than R134A and R717. The pressure at the triple point is high, and the temperature at the critical point is low. These facts must be taken into consideration when utilizing CO2 as a refrigerant. The application of CO2 as a refrigerant was initially introduced in 1850. Several CO2 refrigerant systems were developed during the following years and peaked in the 1920s and early 1930s. Between 1950 and 1960, CO2 refrigeration technology virtually disappeared from the market. However, in 1993, CO2 refrigerant technology had a major comeback after Danfoss specially designed and constructed an observation cell to observe CO2 phase changes, as discussed in this video. The cell is designed to withstand pressures up to 2030.53 PSIA. In this diagram, known as the temperature pressure diagram, or phase diagram for pure CO2, the colored areas represent the temperature and pressure limits at which the CO2 vapor, liquid, solid, and supercritical phases exist. The solid red lines indicate the pressure and corresponding temperatures at which two different phases of CO2 exist in equilibrium. For example, liquid and vapor, solid and vapor, and solid and liquid. The triple point is here, and the critical point is here on the phase diagram. The pressure enthalpy diagram is typically used for refrigeration purposes. For CO2 applications, this diagram must be extended to include the solid and supercritical phases. The colored areas indicate the different phases of CO2, namely vapor, liquid, solid, and supercritical. The triple point is here, and the critical point is here. With that said, we will now discuss the triple point. In the first sequence, the CO2 is cooled by forced evaporation to the stage where it passes through the triple point. The cell is charged with liquid CO2 at an ambient temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit, with an equivalent pressure of 829.62 PSIA. Venting CO2 from the vapor phase allows more liquid CO2 to decant from the supply cylinder to the cell, thus raising the liquid level. The vent and charging valves are closed when the cell is sufficiently full. When the CO2 content within the cell has settled, the vapor and liquid are in equilibrium. This is represented by the cross on the vapor liquid line. The vent valve now opens to release CO2 vapor. The pressure, and therefore the temperature of the liquid CO2, rapidly falls as it boils to produce more vapor. The triple point is reached with a further reduction in pressure and temperature. The system has now moved further down the vapor-liquid equilibrium line. Solid CO2 begins to form once the pressure of 75.42 PSIA and a temperature of negative 69.88 degrees Fahrenheit have been reached. The triple point is the only pressure and temperature combination at which solid, liquid, and vapor CO2 can exist simultaneously in equilibrium. As the pressure continues to fall below the triple point, only solid and vapor are present in the cell. Solid CO2 is also known as dry ice. 
It has a surface temperature of minus 109.12 degrees Fahrenheit at standard atmospheric temperature pressure. The pressure inside the cell is now approximately equal to the surrounding atmosphere of 14.5 PSIA, causing the vent valve to be closed. The entire cell is now below ambient temperature and will absorb heat from the surroundings. Triple point conditions are re-established as the solid CO2 melts, and as the pressure and temperature rise, the cell contains liquid CO2 and vapor in equilibrium. In this portion of the video, we will discuss the supercritical phase. The CO2 will be heated in the following sequence to increase its temperature and pressure to the stage where it passes through its critical point into the supercritical phase. The critical point is the pressure and temperature combination at which the liquid and vapor are equal. The distinction between the liquid and vapor phase disappears gradually as the pressure and temperature increase toward the critical point until only a single phase exists in the supercritical area. The density of CO2 at the critical point is 468 kilograms per meter cubed, which is similar to many liquids, but is nearly 2.5 times higher than the CO2 vapor density at the starting point of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The cell becomes filled with liquid CO2 again under similar conditions as before. The temperature of the liquid CO2 increases, with a consequent increase in pressure as the liquid CO2 boils. The CO2 vapor density above the liquid increases as the temperature and the pressure increase, and the distinction between the two phases disappears. CO2 now exists at a pressure of 1,067.48 PSIA and a temperature of 87 degrees Fahrenheit. After a slight increase in temperature, all the CO2 in the cell is now in the supercritical phase. This supercritical CO2 has some interesting and user-friendly properties. Its identity gives it some of the properties of a liquid. For example, it can act as a solvent for extracting various materials. However, its viscosity is much lower than most liquids, and its diffusivity is consequently higher. These properties have led to great interest in using supercritical CO2 as a safe, effective solvent, particularly for food products. Cell heating is isolated. The supercritical CO2 pressure is reduced by opening the vent valve and the CO2 temperature decreases simultaneously. When the critical point is reached, the distinction between the liquid and vapor phases becomes evident again. Pressure above the liquid CO2 is further reduced in stages by venting more vapor from the cell. And once again, the cell contains liquid and vapor in equilibrium. We hope you have found this short Danfoss video interesting, and thank you for your time. For further information, please reach out to your local Danfoss sales organization.